Now, this, this now is the, is the equivalent in, um, in Alex Salmon terms of Devo Max. Um, the, the, um, we've, we've had the for, we've had the against, and, and, and the third option is does it really matter? And to put, the third, to put Devo Max forward, I'd like to introduce Rachel Roberts from the City and Guilds. Rachel. Right. In an ever-changing, complex, really competitive environment, um, where the margins for success are really, really narrow, um, the capabilities of our staff and how we nurture them are really, really important. Which kind of brings me to my point. Um, surely in that context, what's important, important is business effectiveness, not organizational turf wars. So really, it's important that L&D can be as effective as it needs to be, rather than where it sits. It's important that it's allowed to evolve with business need. Um, sometimes L&D can fit quite nicely in HRD. Sometimes it can fit in sales operations. Sometimes it's a bit of both. Um, OK. I work for City and Gills, which is an awarding organization and vocational education business. And we've got a small but effective um, learning and development department within HRD. They have they're a group of specialized professionals, and they are responsible for developing the structure and the tools that we use um, that underpin our organizational learning and development, and involve some of the things that I have there. Um, the creation of strategic development programs, um, leveraging the benefits of technology, so sourcing and commissioning our LMS and rolling that out, um, and training administration. Now, the work of L&D is essential. It provides an essential foundation to our organizational learning and development. But you can have the best LMS in the world and the best technology in the world, and you can have the widest range of courses, um, but it will have a limited impact if the, bus the business doesn't engage with it, and it's not focused on business needs. It's only then that you get effective, sustainable learning that impacts on the individuals, their performance in their jobs, and ultimately the performance of the business. Now, in City and Gills, making that happen involves many more stakeholders than just um, L&D, and many of those are located through the business. Um, okay. I, within City, I'm not an HR L&D professional. I work within the business in City and Guilds. I work within product development. Um, and our department is um, responsible for creating, the, it's the engine room, the production engine room. We create the assessments, the qualifications, the learning materials. We've got probably about 200 staff, and most of those have got very, they're very highly skilled, very te um, highly specific technical skills. Um, and they have to evolve with a constantly changing external environment, the political environment and the academic educational environment. And last year, we had a major restructure. Uh, and in reality, we figured that our small L&D team weren't close enough to us to be able to support that restructure. So we developed our own program called Support for Success, which was designed, it was designed by the business and it sits within our department. Oops, I go back a bit. It's missed one. It does this sometimes. Um, some examples of what we do. Well, basically, some of the, the, the program support for success involves lots of different aspects. Um, the senior staff within our department are response, they know the job, they are hands-on experience of what the job involves. So they've been involved in developing um, specific performance criteria, um, which gives a view of what good looks like for some of the roles within the department. Um, and it gives a target for our staff and our line managers to work towards. Those senior staff as well have um, also developed a series of specific training programs to support um, the development of the skills and knowledge to underpin those performance criteria. Um, the staff themselves have also been involved in the delivery of those training programs, and that gives them a kind of status as expert practitioner within our community of practice, within our department. Um, we also understand, I'm a learning, I'm an ex-teacher, so I've got an understanding of good pedagogy, so we understand the importance of um, 
how the learning goes on within our department and peer learning and social networks. So we've spent a lot of time encouraging the formal and informal knowledge sharing and um, learning networks, things like um, uh, best practice workshops, all of our um, junior staff have a senior um, staff mentor that they can go to when they have advice. So this encourages people to work together with each other so they can learn from each other. Now the LMS can facilitate this and can support it, but unless the staff engage with it, it really is not going to be any use. Um, another thing that we've done is that we understand that the line managers have a key role to play in building the capability of their staff. Now, halfway through the restructure last year, we understood that some of our new inexperienced managers struggled with that sort of building capability role that they had. So we developed within our department, not L&D, a specific program that focused on um, developing the skills that they would need to coach to give performance feedback um, and verbal recognition, to promote those skills that are important in a one-to-one. -one. Now we've seen, within City and Guilds at least, we've seen some positive benefits. Um, there's been an increase in staff engagement. Um, across our department. We're just collecting data on this at the moment, but there seems initial feedback has been this a, a positive effect on that area. We've seen significant improvements against the key performance criteria. So basically staff are doing their jobs better. It's impacting on the performance in their role and the performance of the business. We've also collected quite a lot of positive um, qualitative feedback, which I'll share with you here. Now this is feedback that we collected post-courses, but also six months after our training. And okay, there's some, some general generic feedback there, but if you look, there's also some comments about how the work that we are doing within our teams actually have an impact on the behaviors of the staff and how they're doing their jobs. And this returns me to my point. The work that we do is less about a few individuals in L and D, and it's more about developing a learning culture, um, and it's having a real impact. Without support for success, we couldn't have supported our restructure. But this is not about me saying that we've done a great job. It's about saying that L and D happens in our organisation, and it's effective. Business effectiveness, not where it sits. And this comes to my last point, is that perhaps we should just get rid of the term learning and development. At least the name of the team, at least. Because it kind of gives the impression that they've got responsibility for it. Um, perhaps it makes it easier for the business to relinquish responsibility to L&D for it. Perhaps without the term L&D, it would make the business understand that we've all got a role to play, and we all have to take responsibility for it, for it, for it to make a difference. Thanks very much, Rachel.